Kramatorsk train station. Women, children and babies crammed together. All here because they've been told for days to evacuate their homes in eastern Ukraine. A new Russian invasion is expected any day. They've come to flee for their lives. This morning, a bomb was fired into the middle of the crowd. It doesn't get much lower than targeting refugees. Desperate people at their most vulnerable, forced to watch their loved ones now die in front of their eyes. Everything exploded, this witness says. It was all of a sudden. Many people are dead. The regional governor says at least 50 have been killed. Five are children and 100 more are injured. In the Kramatorsk hospital, the damage done is all too clear. Psychologically, this is hard, the nurse says. All these children killed, I can't find the words. This man asks, what have Ukrainians done to deserve this? Remnants of a missile were found with a message written in Russian. For our children, it says, suggesting it was a deliberate attack carried out in revenge. They are Russian fascists, this man says. They even wrote on it that it was to avenge their children. The US says this was Russia, using an SS-21 ballistic missile, but the Kremlin has denied Russian responsibility. And speaking to the Finnish parliament, Ukraine's president was clear nobody could mistake Kramatorsk for a military target. This is an ordinary railway terminal. People crowded, waiting for their trains to be evacuated to the safe territory. They hit these people. There are witnesses, there are videos, there are remnants of the missiles and dead people. Senior EU representatives today came to Ukraine under pressure to get tougher on Russian sanctions. How are you? Thank you so much. While here, Ursula von der Leyen was taken to Butcha to bear witness to another atrocity from Russia's invasion, where civilians have been found executed. Here in Butcha, we saw our humanity being shattered. And it is, the whole world is mourning with the people of Butcha. The massacre in Butcha shocked the world, but President Zelensky has warned what happened in Borodyanka is even worse. Here, Russian bombs have ripped through people's lives and their homes. It was sudden, the kitchen is set, the last meal still sits on the table. This is not a rescue mission. They're not expecting to find anyone under this rubble still alive. They are now looking for the missing and trying to uncover more of the hidden horrors from this war. The dead here are still being counted. 30 found in three days. But they know more than a hundred, at least, were hiding in the basements when Russia's bombs fell. Each ruined apartment in Borodyanka is now a tomb to a mass grave below. We met one woman who has come to the rubble every day, just waiting for news on her son and his family. I can see the body of my daughter-in-law, but my son and my granddaughter are buried too deep. The fire service can't reach them yet. I'm staying here, waiting for them all. Ludmila shows us pictures of her son and his wife. He was a doctor, she was a nurse, at the same hospital in Kyiv. Yiva was their only child, just four years old, no threat to anyone. We find one survivor from their apartment block who shows us the makeshift bunker they had tried to hide in with his family. It happened around 9.30pm when we were just going to sleep. There was a strike. We were looking for this family. I was trying to pull them out and kept shouting, but there was no response. For targeting civilians, Vladimir Putin's army stands accused of more war crimes. We heard testimony today they also stopped emergency services here getting in to help the injured. Any survivors trapped in the rubble were left to die slowly. And in the days ahead, we will find out if this is one of the biggest civilian massacres from this war. Peter Smith, News at 10, Borodjanka in Ukraine.